Hey guys, Joe Pye here after a long night's sleep. You know, I thought to myself, if you watch this video, the last video that I posted, if you didn't watch that video, well, then go back and watch that and come back and watch this one. This is exactly the kind of work that you're going to see in a job shop that somebody else is going to bring you and say, whoa, it didn't work out the way I intended it to work out. You know, I don't like it. I don't have another casting. There is no other casting. Nobody in the free world can make this part. So you got to fix it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to jump the gun here and I'm going to bush this part. This hole is not to my liking. It's eccentric on one side and that's just going to bug me forever. And forever is a long time. So I've got to do something about that, right? I am going to push a bushing in there and we're going to re-drill this hole. And this is exactly the kind of work that, uh, you know, separates the men from the boys, so to speak. Well, the only problem with this is the casting. This little piece is a casting, and if you push something in here that's a little bit overly zealous in the interference fit, it's going to explode. It's going to crack, and that's what we don't want. Also, whatever bushing you push in there, <laughs> try saying that three times fast. Whatever bushing you push in there has to consume not only the error, but it has to leave sufficient wall thickness that when you put in your new feature that you don't have a, a razor-sharp C section of the new bushing that you just put in there. So I'm going to draw a quick sketch, illustrate that for you so you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to go out to the mill and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in a little different way for super delicate material and I hope you get something out of it. So hang around. Let's uh, take a look at that sketch. Okay, here's the problem. Here's the existing surface of the material and here is the hole that you want to move. This center has got to go from here over to here. Now Ideally, what you need to do is you need to take a look at where the center needs to be and the extent of one of the points on the bad feature. And that is your new diameter, minimum. And you can see by what I just said about the sharp C corner, this area right here, when we replace this feature into that bushing, you want to make sure that you have wall thickness all the way around. So make sure that if the error in the eccentricity leaves enough material behind for a sufficient wall, then don't worry about it. If not, then when you punch this out, make sure that you stay outside of that feature for the new piece. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. Anyway, let's go out to the mill, and I'm going to show you uh, how to put a bushing in this little guy right here that is not going to explode that casting. Okay, before we start, let's take a real good look at what we have versus what we will have when it's over. I think that the offset of this particular hole is extreme enough that this wall thickness here should be the minimum wall thickness once we put the bushing in. So I'm going to find this center for alignment vertically. Then I'm going to find the center of the boss and knock that out, leaving behind just an artifact right there. So when this hole moves over, we should have sufficient wall thickness of the bushing in that location. And if all goes well, the outside of this casting will be true to the rod when I'm done with this and the holes will still be good. We'll see if it works out that way. Saturday morning, Austin, Texas, July 2nd. Let's do it. With the appropriate size pin in a drill chuck, I am going to hang this piece off that drill chuck. And I am going to reposition the table around it until it squeezes tight. If all goes well, I'll be able to get a nice registration on that part. Get this going. This will not be the final setup for the repair. This is just for the bushing.
just to make sure the part didn't shift in the vise when the vise came closed or didn't flex the pin. I'm going to put my fingers on either side of this and drive this pin in and out of there to see if I can feel it. No, virtually non-existent. Next good way to check that alignment is to put a piece of paper over top of it and use this pin as a punch. It's not a sharp corner on the bottom of that, so I might smear this in before it shears, but let's find out. Any little hanging chad that remains is the indicator of uh, what side was not making full registration, but I think that is close enough. We're going to go with it. Okay, like I said, this is not the final setup. This is the repair setup. Find yourself an end mill, a drill, a reamer, whatever. Knock that hole out and you can make the plug to fit. I'm going to put a couple of wedges underneath this just to support that a little bit. Well, that's bright. It's a 3 16 diameter cutter. It is about a millimeter and a half larger, and it's offset about a half a millimeter in both directions to consume the hole. I'm going to pass this down through there. Hopefully this will be relatively on center, but it has to consume that hole, and that's all I'm worried about right now. Any kind of luck, this part won't explode in the next 45 seconds. Here we go. will be extremely happy if that hole that I just put in there consumed the entire first hole and is relatively true to the bottom as well. I'd hate to see a feather edge on the bottom. Not bad. And not bad. Alright, let's set it up different and see if we can realign that hole. Alright, jumped the gun a little bit on that. I am going to make the bushing that goes in that hole first. So let's step over to the lathe. And I want to make this a really superficial, absolutely perfect slip fit. Not a press fit right now. I do not want to make a press fit bushing for this. And there's a reason for that. I'll show you that in a minute. Here we go. This little plug was turned facing out. You can see the part off remnant on there. And I'm done with this. I want this to protrude equally out both sides. It is a very, very light line contact fit. It is extremely close to being size on size. And since this is aluminum and may transfer and pick up all whatever you want to call it, cold, fuse, weld, attract, I'm only going to do this one time. I don't usually use Loctite, but what the hell. Read it in a book. Let's see what happens. I know the red's better. No comments on that, please. Now for my application, that is ideal. I don't foresee that moving anywhere. And we're going to show you the trick here in a second. Any kind of luck after that is sufficiently anchored and blasted and blended, you won't even see it. A friend of mine, Mr. George Metz, a guy that I did my some of my apprenticeship work under from New Jersey. God bless you, George. God rest his soul. He told me one time, old German guy, he said, Joe, he said, good toolmaker will always make mistakes, but nobody will ever be able to find them. <laughs> Words of wisdom. And so true. You screw it up, cover it up. Unless you point it out, nobody's ever going to know you did it. I'll know I did it, and it'll bug me. 
but I thought it would be a good demonstration, so here we go. Let's clean the Loctite off of this, and I'll show you the trick. Okay, here comes the trick. And I think you can see why I wanted a little bit hanging out of both sides of the casting. Positioned it neatly in the vise. I'm going to squeeze it now and expand the plug. And it's easier to install similar material plugs and then expand the plug than it is to make it a two thou press fit or thou press fit and have it gall and drag all the way in. So I'm just going to give it a gentle squeeze here. Not squeezing it too much. I don't want to blow up the casting. If it blows up, it's going to blow up on the blind side. So let's do it. Though I didn't measure the overall length, I would suggest that as part of the procedure here. If it gets shorter, it's going to have to get wider because there's only so much material to go around. So measure the length of that plug before you start this process and measure it as you go. I can feel the vise yielding so I know the part is expanding. And I think that's about all I'm going to do. There we go. That's not going anywhere. Now we set it up for the recovery. Remember that squeeze trick, it's a good trick. Part is in the machine vise. I have a white paper towel stuck to the back of my machine with a magnet and I'm gonna use a one, two, three block. That's my reference vertical surface. Look at the gap between the part and the one, two, three block. You see an absence of light right there. I think we're going to call it a day. And I got to say that is about as close as I think the human eye is going to pick up. That's pretty tight. I'm going to machine the top off and that'll give me a vertical reference surface should I care to flip this and register it against another surface. That's right there. All right, let's cut it. Gently. I am very pleased with that surface right there. It is nice and true and square to the outside. Hopefully parallel to the base, but I can't guarantee that. There are uh, no dimension present. There is no dimension present on the print for this to anything. So this is strictly cosmetic and functional right now if you want to use it as a reference for when you flip it over to get the bottom of that parallel. I'm going to put the drill chuck in and do some pin work to find out exactly where I'm sitting right now and what type of recovery I got. And I'll be right back. Using a pin exactly the same size as the boss, visual alignment of the new surface is now established. The part has not moved since I've machined the top off of it, so the vertical alignment is still there. Front to rear is identical to this. It is much easier to see, and you can see left to right, we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna put a smaller pin in now, find the two bolt holes, and see what kind of damage I just did. With the correct size pin in the drill chuck at this moment, I am going to find the original holes. And whatever that offset is, if it's beyond 812, I will make an assembly note on the print to drill the mating features at that distance. There's just no way to use this casting with those dimensions and have everything line up 
uh, at least not here and not today. So whatever this comes out to, and my DRO is going to tell me what it is, that is what we're going to put on the print. You know, that's the best job to have, right? Make the part, then make the print. <laughs> I know I'm going to get that in the comments, so I beat you to it. Watch for the pin to deflect if you don't witness any deflection. Life is good. You can also use the paper trick that I showed before. This is about six thousandths away from where it should be. Therefore, the other side should be equally in the opposite direction. Let's see if that's true. There would be a slight taper to these holes since the casting has been shifted. I'm going to redrill these holes on this location. All right, let's see what we get. Now going against every fiber of my existence but for sake of alignment and everything I am going to put that 125 hole in here and then blast it and then flip it and remachine those surfaces. So I do not like blasting after a finished hole. It may embed grain in the material transferring wear to whatever goes in there but I will ream this after the fact or float the reamer back through after the fact and I'll plug the hole when I blast it gently just to avoid that. Moment of truth, the 125 hole going back in that boss right there. This is where you're going to find out how good your press fit is. Gently. Using the exact same setup as I used the first time around. I'm going to use a 3 8 high speed steel tool bit as a parallel reference. And the 
back side of the part which has now been blasted. Can't even tell it was pushed. Alright, there we go. I am applying downward pressure on that end. Let it seat. And let's mill it off. I will clean this up and come up the required dimension and clean this. I expect to see a very non-parallel cut initially because of the change in geometry. Top and bottom is complete. The dimension from the top registration surface up here by my finger down to the inside where the pulley registers is also done. Let's take it out, blast it, clean it up, deburr it, take a final look. After the repair, this is what we have. I like the concentricity of that feature so much better. It's not even funny. Yep, breaking through on the backside is a small improvement as well. Right, I got to say that I'm not responsible for the uh, goodness going on underneath the bottom here, right there. I wish that was a little bit better, but nobody's going to see it. There's going to be a nylon bushing there pressed against the pulley. We still have some projection right here, which is good. Distance-wise, it is right where it should be according to spec. This is about three-quarters of a millimeter out side to side, but I can adjust that on the assembly level and still get away with it. So that's what I'm going to do. You can see the outside of the casting is now parallel to the rod. Everything is square. I am extremely pleased with that. Extremely pleased with that. The blast finish hides the bushing real well. If you've got good eyes, you can see just a hint of the color change between the ID, the bushing, and then the casting. And that is strictly because of the hardness of the material used to blend it. I would think maybe if you annealed that aluminum before you put it in there and squished it, it may work a little bit better after the fact for the blend. But you'd really have to be looking for that to find it. Anyway, there you go. Now I can go to sleep at night because I just couldn't stand the way that looked. And uh, thank you for the PM Research guys. They put one in the mail, Toot Sweet. It is not here yet. But if anything happens in the very near future, I will make sure that I have a spare and I will show you that one too. Anyway, there it is. Life is good. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just uh, don't let anybody find them. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Fourth of July weekend. Be careful. Watch those fingers. You're going to need them on Tuesday. Stay well. Stay happy. I'm out.